Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the Paint with Lovejoy podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. When you're beginning a new skill like painting, what do you need to look at to notice your progress? And how long does it take to notice your progress or improvements? That's going to be the topic of today's podcast. As a first-timer beginner painter, sometimes we don't have a barometer or a gauge for our early success because it's a brand new experience. We have the tendency to judge our work compared to the, the tutorial or the instructor you're following, or if you're actually in a class, you can tend to compare to what your peers are doing. And I want to do my best to kind of steer you away from those and give you a few alternatives to gauge your success. Because it's truly not about what others do, it's about your own progress. And we have to gauge our own growth from where you started. And that's what I want to discuss in today's podcast, so stay tuned. Welcome to the Paint with Lovejoy podcast, the place where first time and beginner painters can learn more about acrylic painting, the mindset of learning a new skill, and where your creative questions will be answered. Hey guys, welcome to the Paint with Lovejoy podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. This is uh, episode 12. I believe I put 13 out before 12, so just going a little backwards to keep them in order. Um, but really, really enjoying um, this kind of this this format. You know, being able to just kind of speak. I do put together a nice outline. I'm kind of figuring out what is my best formula and addressing all the questions that you guys have. And this is this has been really fun. And it's nice to just kind of use my voice instead of having to create or edit too much afterwards. So um, I hope you guys are enjoying this platform as much as I am. Uh, as always, please email any of your questions, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or leave comments in the box below on any of the social media platforms. And like I've stated in the other podcast, so many of you do have these same questions as beginner painters, and it's good to know that you're not alone. And I am going through and addressing each one of those questions uh, one by one. I also have quite a few first time and beginner painting camps available online, so please check those out. It's really nice to have a consistent two week or four week camp that kind of keeps you accountable to where you paint every week, every week, and then that's how you're gonna see your skills grow. So please check those out. Check out my other um, YouTube videos if you just want kind of a one-off, but please explore your creative efforts and ways to bring it into your life on a weekly or at least a monthly basis. I'm gonna stress that I want you to paint on a weekly basis because that's actually where you're gonna see the most improvement and the most growth on your part. So please do what you can to get there. These podcasts are to help kind of alleviate some of those stresses that you may encounter as a beginner painter, um, or if you're doing this at home by yourself, give you the support of some of the concepts that you might be going through that, or struggling with that you're not quite sure how to get through. And that's what this podcast is uh, here to help you with. So let me know any things that you guys, um, any barriers or blocks or even just your happy moments. Please let me know how your progress is going. So do you throw away a creative project after a few steps because you think it looks horrible? Or have you attended a paint and sip class but never painted again because you thought your friend's painting looked better than yours? Uh, how many of you can relate to that? In today's podcast, that is exactly what we're discussing. And we're gonna talk about how to gauge your progress and success as a first time or beginner painter. It is tough in today's instant gratification society to value progress when all we see are the viral sensations and the end result. And we see things that others are achieving um, that we want. And it makes us a little bit jealous. It makes us a little bit awkward about our own process and we hardly ever see the progress of how they got there. And that's really what I wanna focus on because your progress from one painting to the next is what you're gonna build your skills on. And those are the um, those things that you'll do. You'll put hours of work in prior to anybody seeing that final painting or prior to any public success. Um, and with that, 
it kind of gives us unrealistic expectations when all we want is that final outcome. We really need to focus on the process and have realistic expectations on that process rather than just the final thing that we see. Our society is great at judging that final project uh, or final product and rarely does it applaud the efforts that it takes to get there, the hours that it takes to get there. We are so quick to judge that final product that we end up translating that judgment onto ourself and judging the progress rather than the final bit. But what I really want to do is I want to take out that judgment for yourself, for your own progress. Judgment is not going to be your friend in the creative process, especially at those first time and beginner stages. It is so much more about the progress, not perfection, but the progress of getting a little bit better than where you started, than what you painted prior. And then after you have four or five paintings under your belt, looking back and seeing your progress from that first painting to your current painting. So I want you to make a commitment to yourself right now that when you are doing a creative project like painting, dancing, charades, or singing, I want you to leave your judgment at the door and focus on your progress, how you did compared to the last time that you did that activity. And if that's it, it's that simple. I want you to focus on your progress. Leave the judgment at the door. And to give you a bit of a better visualization, this is something that I love saying to all my adult classes, and I love that it immediately just kind of um, relaxes them and gets them ready to be creative. And I want you to call yourself an adult kindergartner. I want you to treat yourself like a kindergartner. And like I said, when you put yourself in this mindset, you're more about the process and you're more open to the creative potential that you have and you have more fun in that process. And that's really what creativity is about. It's about the process. It's not about the final outcome because you're, you're gonna keep getting better the more that you practice. So if you can enjoy the process and the time and space that you um, are in when you're creating, you're gonna judge like I said, don't judge it, but you'll be uh, relying on those feelings rather than the judgment of your final painting. And because I call it adult kindergarten, like I said, I love um, starting my classes off and stating that because I instantly see the students relax and it takes the pressures off of being creative, of being perfect, of being better than somebody else, of you know, making it look like what the tutorial looks like. It takes that pressure off and it makes the creative effort approachable. So anytime that you do something creative, whether it's painting, dance, um, singing, charades, anything, you are an adult kindergartner and you are focusing on the process. It's just kindergarten. It doesn't matter. We're all here to have fun. So again, I encourage you to embrace this mindset because creativity is like handwriting. Each and every one of us has a unique handwriting style. So just like painting, you're going to have your own style. It's going to be different than the tutorial. It's going to be different than the instructor. It's going to be different than maybe somebody that you might be painting with or one of your peers in your class. And we all have learned to embrace our handwriting, whether it's sloppy, whether it's really pretty, whether you write in print, whether you can write in cursive, you have learned to embrace your handwriting as is. So I want you to look at your creativity the same way. Embrace your creativity just like you embrace your handwriting. And I do like to state when I say that um, in class, my handwriting is so freaking sloppy. I was meant to be an artist or a doctor and obviously you can tell which one that I chose. I went with the creative route, but I did have to learn to embrace uh, my own handwriting. So I want you guys to do the same thing. Embrace your handwriting style, embrace your, create, your creative unique style. So let's discuss a few of the tools that you do need to utilize this creative kindergarten uh, mindset to aid in the success of 
progress, of your progress. The success of progress is actually what has gotten you where you're at exactly in life. Your success of progress has gotten you to where your job is, to where your hobbies are, and even where you're at with your relationships. You have to make small steps every day, small progress in those directions that you want. And this is success of progress. It's also called growth, learning, evolution, change, maturity, wisdom. That's all progress is. It leads to all of those things. So again, try to remember to keep that mindset when you do something brand new out of your comfort zone, like painting as a beginner, you're focusing on your growth and your progress, not perfection, not comparing to the people um, in your class or the tutorial or video that you may be following, your progress. And the first tool that I want you to utilize in that um, documentation of your growth is to take your progress photos. Any of you that have already watched any of my videos um, or even listened to some of my other podcasts, you know that I encourage progress photos constantly. And these are one of the instant ways that you can watch how you transform a blank canvas into something you created. And it's really satisfying when you go back and look at those pictures after you know what your final painting looks like, go back and look at those pictures and flip through. And in 30 seconds on your phone, you get to see the transformation of that canvas into what you created compared to maybe the couple of hours or couple of days, possibly even a couple of months that it may have taken you to uh, create go back and look at those progress photos. And I also want you to even look at those photos and try to remember how you felt when you initially took that photo, when you didn't know what the rest of your painting was going to turn out or look like. Go back. Did you feel nervous? Were you scared? Were you really concerned that maybe this isn't for you? And I want you to remember those feelings and then look at your final painting go, I did pretty good. Even though I was nervous and I didn't know where it was at this point, I still came through. I followed step by step and it turned out pretty good. I can do that again. That is the simple thing that I want you to do. Look at those progress photos, gain the confidence of go, yeah, I didn't know, but now I do. And take that into your next painting or your next creative um, endeavor. And another important thing is that after you have completed four or five paintings, with all those progress photos, I want you to go back to that very first painting and do the same thing. Try to remember how you felt, the nervousness, the confusion, and then I want you to compare that feeling to the progress photos of your most recent painting. Were you a little more comfortable? Was it less daunting? Did you kind of understand the process a little bit more? And that is a visual documentation of your growth, of your process. And you get more and more comfortable with it the more that you do it. So when comparing your first painting to your most recent painting, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. And if you feel like writing it down, go for it. But, you know, pause the podcast and ask yourself each one of these questions. So again, compared from your first painting to your most recent painting, are you more comfortable mixing your paint? Even if it's just a little bit, if you know how to make that light shade of blue or that light shade of yellow, that's progress. Are you more comfortable with holding the brush and the pressure to use to apply the paint? Maybe you started off heavy handed and it was kind of sloppy. Maybe you have a little bit more control now. Maybe you can make some of those smaller, finer lines because your muscles are comfortable with that pressure and with holding the brush. Even if it's just a tiny, tiny little progress of comfort, I want you to acknowledge that for yourself. Um, while you've been working with your brushes, have you found a favorite brush after painting five paintings? Quite a few of my students um, end up having a very particular brush that they end up using um, all the time. That is totally okay. You wouldn't have known that comfort level with that tool unless you practiced and painted multiple times. So if you end up having a favorite tool, that's a good thing. That is a sign of progress. That is a sign of learning. 
Another question that I want you to ask from your first painting to your most recent, as you're looking at your progress photos, are you more comfortable with finishing a painting from start to finish? Think back to that first painting that you were scared and confused and you didn't know how it was going to turn out, but you realized that by going step by step, it turned out pretty good. And by the time you get to your fifth painting, do you trust that step by step process a little bit more because you know one thing builds on another as you work your way through the steps? Something to just take note of. Another thing that I want you to ask yourself, especially if you are painting on a regular basis, which again, I recommend at least weekly, um, at very minimum, monthly, but are you looking forward to your painting time? That is a good sign of progress and a good sign that you are getting more comfortable with your skills when you start looking uh, forward to your painting time. I, for one, love my painting time because that's for me when the rest of the world disappears and I get to, just like you, transform that blank surface into something I created. I get very excited about that. Um, another thing I want you to take notice of, are you noticing that in your daily life, at work, with your family, maybe in traffic, are you a little less stressed out? Do you have something that used to trigger you, that used to trigger anger or frustration or irritation, does it still trigger you? Or is that trigger a little less intense? Notice that if you are bringing painting or creative outlet into your life, is it making other areas of your life less stressful? And I really, if you can point that out in your life, I really want you to hone in on it and focus on that a lot because that is one of the underlying hidden benefits of the creative process. It gives you an outlet so that way your other logical things in your life maybe become a little less triggering, a little less stressful. Um, for me, again, that is a huge factor in my life. If I didn't have my painting, I would be wound up so tight and I'd probably be so angry, but because of my palette knife scraping method and my professional work, it has kept me sane and it has gotten me through so many emotional challenges, personal challenges, relationship challenges, work challenges. My painting has gotten me through so many things and it's helped kind of keep me level um, and it's helped keep me refreshed to come back and deal with those stresses and those triggers from a more calm and centered place. So I, for one, am thoroughly, thoroughly grateful for my painting time. All right, a last question that I want you to consider is now that you are in your fifth, sixth, seventh painting, do you have a painting routine? Do you have a setup on your table that you like before you even get started painting? Do you like painting at a certain time of day? Do you like the house to be quiet when it, you know, maybe your housemates or your family are gone? Do you have a certain music? Do you open a bottle of wine? You know, are you looking forward to your painting routine throughout the day because you know it's a peaceful and stress relieving place for you? That is another sign of progress and growth for your beginning stages as a first time or beginner painter. So a lot of times our growth um, isn't necessarily that you did the painting perfect or it looks exactly like the tutorial. It's in these small everyday things of how painting affects you. Are you less stressful? Are you looking forward to your painting time? Um, are you trusting the process a little bit more? Again, all um, ways to show that you are progressing in your skills um, and in your creative efforts. And as you ask yourself these questions, they don't have set answers and you they are to get you a bit more inclined to focus on your progress. Progress, progress, progress. <laughs> it goes hand in hand with practice, 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 practice. The benefits of practice help bring your uh, bring balance to your life. Stepping out of your busy logical life to get lost in the process of creativity brings balance to you. Finding and maintaining your balance is a unique journey just for you. I am here to help assist that, make it a little bit easier, make it a little bit more entertaining, 
um, and to help point out all of those places that, hey, look what you used to do. Look at what you're doing now. Look at how you've grown. I'm here to help you kind of acknowledge those things um, in your life because if you're new to painting, they're not always the first things that you look at. So I'm here to help you with that. Keep it simple. Do not overcomplicate creativity. We have enough overcomplicated things in this society and this world. So let creativity, let painting be simple. Step by step, one thing at a time, and focus on the time and the space that you're creating and how you feel during that time and space. That is the biggest benefit of painting that I wish I could figure out more words, more descriptive ways to share that with my students so that way you can get there. But half the time, you only get there from practice, practice, progress. So it is up to you to find those ways to bring painting or a creative outlet into your life. And like I said, creativity is about getting lost in your process and enjoying that time for you. Even if you throw away your painting, and I have thrown away many of my own paintings, that's okay. You still paint it. I don't care if you throw it away, but get back in there and paint again. And you will find that as you paint more, these make great gifts for birthdays, for anniversaries, for holidays. And people are very touched when you take time to get creative, make them a handmade gift, and then present it with them. And then it's also a gift to you because then they get to tell you how awesome it is, how much it means to them. And that hopefully helps fuel you forward to continue to paint, to continue that creative outlet. It's all connected. It's all a nice cycle so we can continue to find balance in our life. So again, do not overcomplicate the creative process. There is great beauty in the simplicity of the process, in the simplicity of going step by step and focusing on your progress, focusing on your growth, focusing on how you feel. So again, just to keep this simple and to give a quick recap on the few things that I went over Treat your creative efforts like adult kindergarten. You are a kindergartner that takes away a lot of the stress. I want you to have fun. Enjoy the journey. Leave the judgment for other things. There is a plenty of other things to judge in your life. Creativity is not one of them. Again, focus on the process. Focus on the practice. Focus on how you feel during that time frame from one painting to the next. Notice your comfort level increasing with the tools and with applying the paint. With each painting you complete, you get more comfortable and you gain a little bit more confidence with each painting. And before you know it, you will have all these skills under your belt and you'll look at a harder painting and go, yeah, I can do that. I can give that a try. To where when you first started, you might not have said that. And for those of you that do um, would like help um, getting through this process because you're still nervous, if you're a first time painter, please check out my first time painter boot camp. Um, it's on the Paint with Lovejoy website, and I'll have links below. It's a four week course, and I will slowly push your skills so that way you can gain your confidence in painting to try harder things. In the camp, you'll get comfortable with your supplies with mixing your paint, and I give you weekly feedback and support so that way I can encourage the things that you're doing well and also point out a few things that I want you to work on for the next week's painting. Each week, the paintings get a little bit more challenging, and by the time we finish that fourth week, you're going to look at those paintings and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I was blending in those small spaces. I can't believe I actually accomplished that. So again, with weekly painting, along with the feedback has helped a lot. You just slowly step out of your comfort zone and get more comfortable with a little bit more complex skills each time. And again, focusing on your growth and your progress rather than what the final painting looks like. If you have already taken my first time painter boot camp, check out the um, blending camp. We'll talk about three different ways to blend or 
step up and check out my Paint Your Pet course. I have it broken into um, three courses to make it easy for you and you learn more about the value scale and how to kind of edit your photo. There's a pop art version and then also the real light, realistic version to where you'll focus on your value scale. Um, but all of my camps, all of my courses are simple step-by-step -step process. And if you just kind of follow along, you will achieve something that you possibly thought you couldn't prior to that. And it makes it easier once you do it here to go try something else and go, well, if I did it in painting, maybe I can try something else that I've been wanting to try for a while. And again, if I take it step by step, I can't accomplish it. Um, and that's a really fun feeling. That's a good feeling to have, knowing how you learn and knowing how you can continue to learn and push your skills. So no matter what you paint, um, whether you paint with me or you even paint with another instructor, these are all skills, basic skills that you're going to learn on, learn about, and then you keep growing. And in all of my courses, I do try to sneak in some um, foundational art skills in there without you realizing it. And a lot of the things that you learn in my courses, you can take into other creative projects and go, oh, value scale, I know how to do that or I understand that, and you're gonna expand on that. Or um, you take my beginning courses and you go, you know what, I'm more comfortable with blending now, I can try that harder painting. Or now that I'm more comfortable mixing paint, I can go and change something and make it more my own. And those are all amazing, wonderful growth progress things that you should be focusing on for your creative efforts. So I am going to leave it on that. Thank you so much for hanging out for this episode of Paint with Lovejoy. Please like, subscribe to the channel, leave your questions so that way I can address them later. And uh, please keep painting. Um, you have no idea what a great benefit it is for yourself until you start trying. And your future self is going to be so grateful that you gave painting a try today because by the time you recognize your future self, you'll have a lot of paintings underneath your belt. So um, thanks again for joining. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. And until then, cheers.